guys. Welcome to the next episode of Talking Decon. I am Laura Spaulding, CEO of Spaulding Decon. And to my left here is Fiona Mills, our franchise ramp up coach. And to my right here, the lovely Mariah Watts, who is our content creator. Today, I have chosen a case that was actually recommended by you, our subscriber. Um, I hadn't heard of this, despite the fact that I live in Florida. And it just reminded me as I was looking through all of your comments for recommendations of interesting cases that everything is typically in Florida. We have a crazy psycho state. And I don't know if you guys remember, there used to be a show by Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla called like the love doctor or something, but there was a tiny segment when it was like a, did it happen in Germany or Florida? Wow. And the, um, this, the consensus behind it was that everything crazy happens either in Germany or Florida. And so they would say, they would tell a story and then somebody would have to say Germany or Florida and see if they get it right. And it, there was crazy stuff. It's the heat. Is that it? Yes. Though? Makes it's, people snap. Does that make people eat people's faces though? Maybe. Oh, yeah, that could be. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been in that position before. Where you wanted to eat people's faces? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was too hot. It was too hot. It yeah. was just too hot. I couldn't eat. Yeah. yeah. So today I chose a guy uh, that's quite scary looking. Uh, his name is, I hope I pronounced this correctly, Masak Masak Damas. He is from Haiti. So he's rather young. He was born in 1976. So um, pretty young guy for the most part. Now he grew up in Haiti. Okay. So I, I have always heard that there's like a lot of like voodoo stuff in Haiti and that's where a lot of this stuff originated. Well, he grew up in this like evangelical Christian family and, uh, his mom and dad left him in Haiti when he was 10 years old to come to the United States. So I guess they were just like, peace out. So he stayed with other relatives and kind of started doing this um, voodoo practice type stuff. Well, when he was 19, he decided to move to the United States as well. So I'm wondering if he kind of harbors some anger there that his parents left him. Um, but he got a job as a local chef at this steakhouse when he was 33 years old. Um, he was married and he had five kids, lots and lots of kids, right? So he was very controlling and there was a lot of like domestic violence uh, issues and police were called over the years. So uh, the guy's got a temper, a pretty bad temper. Well, um, he decided that uh, he was going to continue to control his wife and she had had enough. Mm. She asked for a divorce and he responded that if you divorce me, I'll fucking kill you. Those words quoted. So uh, he started to get paranoid that she was going to leave and she worked at actually public supermarket. So she had to be there at a 5 a.m. shift. He followed her mm -hmm. to work without her knowing it to see if she was really going to work. Now, she wasn't having an affair or anything. He was just absolutely paranoid about it because she wanted to leave him. So she discovered through another employee or something that he had followed her, and that started a big argument. And uh, the conversation and the argument bothered him the entire day. When he went into work, he left after only two hours saying, I've got a splitting headache. I got to go home. So instead of going home, he goes to a store and purchases a fillet knife, a roll of duct tape, and the most serious part of it all, a pack of gum. You got to have minty fresh breath, right? Minty. Could you I mean, imagine just checking that out? Yeah, checking that like, out. Oh. Hmm, okay. <laughs> so when he got home, his wife uh, wasn't speaking to him other than asking him to sign immigration papers because she intended to leave. She was from Haiti as well. Mm. He then grabbed the knife, tied her with rope, and duct taped her mouth. At this point, I think she's thinking, shit's about to go south. I don't I think know. he popped some gum in his mouth, too. That's what I'm wondering. Time. Yeah. I mean, I got a Was it Orbit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dirty mouth. Clean it up. <laughs> Orbit. Nice voice, feed. Yeah, that was a good voice. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the story goes from his confession that he actually stabbed her multiple times in the neck 
and then proceeded to go to his children's rooms and stabbed all of them in the neck too. Oh now, all the children, all five of them, were under the age of nine years old. Uh, so in his infinite wisdom, he after he kills them all and lines their bodies up and puts a trash bag over her head, he decides to drive to the Miami International Airport. Now, this is Naples that this happened, Collier County, Florida, and uh, books a one-way ticket back to Haiti. So she didn't show up for work, so they sent police to check the welfare, and that's when they discovered all of the children's bodies and her body. Brutally, brutally murdered. But he only covered her head? Right. It's almost like, don't look at me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I believe that that's probably symbolic on it. Uh, so he's trying to get away to go back to Haiti, right, that same day. But the U.S. Marshals intervened and got him somehow. And uh, when they asked him, where are you going? He said, I know what I did was wrong. And I don't deserve to live. But the devil made me do it. Yeah, right? So here comes all his voodoo stuff back. And uh, he said that he had bad spirits. And uh, he didn't want to live after he did that. So, of course, one of the issues that came up here, he admitted it. Then it was like a competency issue. It's like, what is this guy sane enough to stand trial? Yeah. Right? So he's saying, I want to die. But he w apparently the trial went on and on and on for multiple reasons, all caused by him. So he had multiple outbursts in trial, like crazy shit. He fired all his defense attorneys that were public defenders. At one point, he wanted to represent himself. Never a good idea, public service announcement, to represent yourself, just yeah. saying. Um, so it just kept going on and on and on. And every time he's in court, he looks like deranged, like just disheveled. And so it's like the prosecutors were like, is this guy playing it? Is this guy really a nut job? Like what's going on here? So ultimately they ended up sentencing him to six life sentences. Wow. Yeah. So of course me, I'm thinking six life sentences, please get him off the state's payroll and let's give him the needle and let's move on. Right. Why, why but does Florida do that? Uh, it, well, capital punishment is, you know, we do death row. We have, yeah, we, you know, well, I mean, if this guy was able to kind of prove he was crazy, you know, like, but he didn't, he didn't get off on an insanity plea. You think the jurors probably felt some type of guilt or, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, you know, to kill your wife and six children. But to stab him repeatedly in the neck. Like killing him. Six one babies, thing. all under the age of yeah. nine, the youngest one being 11 months old. Oh my God. Come That's... on, man. You're a sick kind of. At that point, you should get killed the same way you killed. Yes. And to just do this voodoo shit and say, the spirits made me do it. And no, the spirits didn't make you do it. You're jealous, you're abusive. You're in, you know, you put your family in a domestic violence situation. You should have gotten the death penalty, period, the end. There's no such thing as six life sentences, in my opinion. And you're not crazy if you knew to flee the flee the country. Of yeah, course, because exactly. he knew that Haiti wouldn't extradite. Yeah, he knew yeah. exactly what he was doing. So, you know, my issue is these guys sit on death row forever and they get appeal after appeal, which I agree with. I'm okay with that because you want to be positive. But this guy admitted it. So let's not do life sentences. Let's just go straight to the chair. Like skip the crap and skip just, the crap yeah. and go to the chair. So us as taxpayers are paying for this maggot to live off of us. And if he wants a law degree, we have to pay for it. But yet our kids or our family members, if we want to go to college, We've got to, you know, take out loans to sacrifice our life to, you know, sell a kidney to be able to get a college degree. But all you have to do is get arrested and you get free health care and a free college university, yeah. you know, education. So 
just some of the frustrations that it doesn't make sense to me from a governmental standpoint why you give inmates that have been convicted of crimes these general health and education benefits that all Americans should receive. Yeah. But apparently you just have to be convicted of a crime to get that. So anyway, I am off my soapbox on that. Um, So that's my interesting case for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, talking decon today. Don't forget to subscribe and like the channel and ring that bell so that you're notified when the next episode comes out every Tuesday. And please follow us on TikTok and Instagram. It's at Crime Scene Cleaning. And we appreciate you here. And thank you, Vanessa Hunt, for recommending this case. I was uh, flabbergasted that I hadn't heard about it, but I appreciate it. And I'm glad to let everyone else in our audience know about this psychopath. So you guys have a great day.